In my previous video, I showed you how to connect your Power Virtual Agent in Teams to Q&A Maker using the fallback topic. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the same functionality, but instead of using Q&A Maker, we're going to be using the language understanding service called Lewis, as well as a SharePoint list. And I like this option a tad better because it gives you a little more control over those responses and allows you to assign people in your organization um, the ability to edit those responses without having to give them access to anything strange like Q&A Maker or Azure or anything. So um, here we are in Teams and we are at the same place in our bot that we were in the previous video where we had the fallback topic. So if we click on our bot, first bot, and then we go into our topics for that bot, you will see that fallback topic that we enabled previously. So let's go ahead and go to the authoring canvas for that fallback, where we are calling into Power uh, Automate to connect to the Q uh, question and answer bot. And let's go ahead and delete this action because now we're not going to be using this action. Instead, we want to connect to a service called Lewis. And what I've actually done for you guys is I exported the knowledge base that was in Q&A Maker and I turned it into something that could be used in both Lewis, imported into Lewis and imported into SharePoint. And I'll share those files with you guys and I'll step you through the process for how I did that here. So what we need to do is we need to go into Lewis. So if you go to Lewis.ai, uh, you will have to set up a uh, authoring resource in Azure for, to use Lewis and I've already got that set it up at, at this point. Uh, Lewis is a great service and I do plan to do an uh, entire blog post on it if not a series of blog posts because it's a, it's, a, it's a great service to get started with a lot of things AI related. Lewis stands for language understanding and what it can do is it allows you to send a question to Lewis to this service and Lewis will tell you what the intent of the person is. So it's, it's important to understand Lewis doesn't give you responses that you would give to your user, but it lets you know what the user is trying to do. So if a user says, I want to take a vacation, Lewis would say they're asking about vacations. Or if they say, hey, what are my benefits? Lewis could say they're asking about benefits. And these are called intents. What is the intent of the user? The intent is to ask about a vacation. The intent is, ask, is to ask about benefits. And so you would come into Lewis, create your app, and then you would add all the intents. What are all the things that people are going to ask? But again, to make your life easier, I exported um, the personality and the basic questions that I had in Q&A Maker for the previous video, and I turned it into a JSON file. And if we look at that JSON file over here, we're going to open it with code. This is the JSON file that Lewis needs in order to um, import it into Lewis. And I'll, I'll give you guys a link to this, like I said. So I'm in Lewis. We want to create a new app, and I'm going to import it as JSON. So let's choose that file that I previously set up. C dev. PBAs, and there's the JSON. Let's give our bot a name. We will call it the Pate Lewis app, and we'll create that. So this is importing that JSON and turning it into questions and intents. So let's go ahead and jump over to that, and we can see that there are all these intents. And most of these intents are that, are that personality that we extracted from Q&A Maker. So if you look at one that was like, Here's an intent called buy. If we open up buy, it's basically here's all the things that people could say. They could say bye, goodbye, see you later, later. And Lewis is going to tell me that their intent is to say bye. And then I can determine what I want to do once I know what their intent is. Um, we can also look for the intents. We can search for intents. Let's see, there's one for contact. So I did create that one for people who wanted to contact Pate. So you can see if someone says call Pate, contact, how do I reach you, how do I get in touch? It's going to return the intent contact. So again, if a person asks Lewis, how do I contact Pate? 
Lewis is not going to respond with, here's the contact information. Lewis responds with, the person is asking about contact. Their intent is contact. So I took the personality, I took those questions, I've created a Lewis app out of them. I can actually train this app now. And I can test it. So the distinguishing feature here again between Q&A Maker and Lewis is that Q&A Maker has both the questions and the answers, whereas Lewis technically just has the questions and the intent. So when we test this and say, how are you? It comes back with doing great. So the intent is doing great. I can say, how do I contact Pate? And it comes back with contact. Okay, so it's simply coming back with what is the intent of the person asking the question, not what is the response we want to show the person. So this is half of our bot, understanding what people are asking. And because it's using AI, the user doesn't have to ask the question the exact way. Like there is not a question that says, I want to call you or I want to call Pate. But if I type in, I want to call Pate, it's able to determine that the, that the intent of the person is to contact. And you can see if the person asks a question that is not identical to one that is used as a seed, its score, meaning how, how sure is it that's the right answer, goes down. So it went from 99% to 78%, but it's still pretty sure it knew what you were asking. So now we've got our questions in here in Lewis. Now we just need to have the actual responses as well. And to do that, I'm going to be using a SharePoint list. And I very much like a SharePoint list because our users are already using SharePoint a lot. At least my users are, a lot of our clients are. So if you've got this knowledge base for this bot, it's very easy to give somebody access to a list in SharePoint and say, hey, when it's time to update a response, update it in the SharePoint list. Don't worry about logging into some other weird service to do it. Do it where you're probably already doing a lot of work. So to get this list created, um, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to import it from an Excel spreadsheet. And I'm showing you all these steps because I'm actually going to give you guys the links to these files as well so that you can actually create this bot if you want to. So I'm going to create a new list using the new Microsoft list feature. I'll be creating a list from Excel. I'm going to upload a file and that file is called Q&A responses. It's going to upload the file asking me which table it wants to use and then it's saying hey what do you want to map these things to so I'm going to map the first column title field to a column called title and the next one to a single line of text field uh, that is going to be the actual response so you can see this is my spreadsheet where it has the title field and that title field is the intent and then the response is what do we actually want to show the user so when all is said and done a person is going to ask a question the question is going to be sent to Lewis. Lewis is going to send back the intent. The intent is hardware. And we're going to query the SharePoint list and say, oh, Lewis said the intent is hardware. What do I want to show the user? And we'll show the user, I don't have the hardware for that. So the actual responses are stored in SharePoint. So let's go ahead and click on next. It's saying give our uh, list a name. We'll call it Q&A responses. And then we want to put that into our site. Let's choose a site here. Let's choose the demos site that I have and create that list. So our list is now created. You can see that there are the intents and the responses. And again, I got this by exporting the QA Maker now a database and extracting all this stuff out separately and, and created these two things that I can upload. So now we have Lewis and now we have a SharePoint list. What I do need to do is I do need to publish my Lewis application and we're going to publish it to a production slot so we can use it. Now I'm going to click on this link to access my endpoint URLs. I'm going to add a prediction resource using the my subscription and my re resource that I previously created and create that prediction resource. Now that, that resource has been created, it gives us some important information that we are going to need later. It's going to give us our primary keys. It's going to give us our endpoints. Under settings, 
we need to make sure that our endpoints are public so that we can call those from our power automate flow so we published to our prediction endpoint and we turned our endpoints on okay so now our Lewis app has been published. We've got our SharePoint list with our answers. We can finally get in there and start building stuff with our bot. So jumping back over into Teams, we are going to add an action. We are going to create a new Power Automate flow. We're going to select Power Virtual Agents flow template. And just like in the previous video, we're going to add an input to store the question that gets passed in. And now we are going to add an action. And if we search for Lewis, we see there's one that's called get, get prediction. It is now asking us to set up a connection to our Lewis app. So let's give our connection a name. We we'll call this Pate Lewis. And now it's asking for an API key. So if we come over back into Lewis and click on our Azure resources, you will see that we have our keys here as well as our endpoint. So we can copy our key and paste it into the API key. And then we can also click on our endpoint URL and copy that and paste that in here. So we paste it in our API key and endpoint as listed under our Azure resources in our Lewis app. So we can create that connection. Now it's asking us for an app ID. So if we again come back over to our Lewis app, click on the settings over here to the left, here we have our app ID. So we can copy that app ID. Oops enter a custom value we will paste in that ID and now it's asking for the utterance text and that text is going to be the question that comes in to our power virtual agent through our power virtual agent to this power automate flow so we're now calling Lewis we should now be able to get that intent from Lewis so the next thing we need to do is filter that SharePoint list and get the actual response from the SharePoint list so if I do a search for get items we're going to use the get items from SharePoint for the site. We're going to choose that demos site that we created our list in. And we're going to choose that list we just created called Q&A responses. Finally, we need to filter this list where the title field is equal to the top scoring intent name. Okay. If we go back and jump and look at that list in SharePoint again, the title field over here has the intents that will be turned from Lewis. And then the response field has the actual response we will show to the users. So now we are queried the list. Let's make sure that this is it within the quotes. And now we need to store the response from the SharePoint list to a variable. So let's add an action here. We will initialize a variable. We'll call the variable response. It will be a string. Now we are going to set a variable. And we are going to set the variable response to the value from the SharePoint list, which was the response field. And finally, we need to return to our power agent the actual response variable. So we're going to create the output of Q&A response and it will be our response variable. Be sure to change your name of your flow. We will ch change it to Q&A response from Lewis and SP. And we will save this. Close this 
And now actually I need to delete this again because I didn't actually save it before. So delete that old action. Add the action we just created. Which was Q&A response from Lewis and SharePoint. Where the question is going to be the unrecognized trigger phrase. And to the user, we will be displaying the Q&A response. And so now I can save that. So let's test it out. I'll say hello. And this will actually come from the topic for our bot, the, uh, the greeting topic. But maybe I can say, tell me a joke. And so now, two goldfish are in a tank. One looks at the other and says, do you know how to drive this thing? Okay, so I actually called Lewis, got that intent from Lewis for a joke, and then got the response from the SharePoint list for the joke. So I can maybe say, how are you? And again, that came from the SharePoint list. I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How do I contact Pate? And then there's a the contact information for Pate. Okay, so now uh, we've got our bot working where it's using Lewis and it's using that SharePoint list. You can now contact someone in HR and say, hey HR, I need you to maintain the responses that our bot uses. So they can now enter that information in the bot. They don't have to republish the bot in order for those new responses to come through. Uh, we can just now publish this bot to our team like we did a couple of videos before. Uh, and yeah, so go crazy. So again, I will provide you guys links to the files I used for both importing the Lewis app and for the SharePoint list so that you can recreate this solution uh, following the steps in this video. I uh, hope you found it interesting and learned something. Thanks a lot.